Yo, what's up, boys and girls? It's your old boy, Steven, the Kansas Gamer, coming at you with another video. <coughs> uh, sorry, I had something in my throat. All right, it's time for a follow-up and update video. Now, since I made the Battleship video, I've been going back and forth trying to decide some things for the channel, and I thought it'd be a good idea to make an update video to fill in the very few people who actually follow this channel, and, you know, throw in some stuff I missed about the four games I reviewed earlier. Now, first things first, I will not be making a second channel. I, I was thinking about condensing all the gameplay videos that me and Jeff put together and just putting them on their own channel. But, yeah, just, I'm not going to do that. It's, that's just going to be too much work and kind of a waste of time, to be honest with you. But, you know, I mean, fuck, no, y'all don't care if I keep putting gameplay videos. I know some of you like some of them. Actually, I tried having a second channel not too long ago. But nobody watched it. Like, I get, got no views. It was just a clips channel. So everything is just going to stay on this channel. It's just going to be here forever. One channel forever now. Now, if I do some kind of, like, analog horror thing, which I'm not going to do, I might make a set, set up a second channel for that, but that's probably not going to happen. Also, me and Jeff, we've already finished all of Halo. We didn't play Five or Infinite. And we finished all the Gears games, except for the RTS and, like, the, the one expansion for Gears 3. And we've also got a few other games we finished that we're going to put... You know, so there's going to be a steady supply of gameplay videos. Two brothers playing co-op games. That's just going to slowly get churn, churned out over time. And it's pretty much just editing practice for me. That's all it really is. Now, we have also canceled a few games that we, uh, we're we going to play. You know, Star Lancer co-op was not working out. That was so bad. I don't know if it was just because of, like, a Windows XP computer connected to a Windows XP virtual machine or what. But it was... It was, there was some serious connectivity. Well, not connectivity, but there were some serious game problems. We might put out a uh, Star Lancer gameplay videos where Jeff's the co-pilot. He, 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 he'd be my Rio radar intercept officer and I'll be the main pilot. Which actually wouldn't, you know, he'd, pretty much, he'd have the keyboard and I'd have the controller. Now, we also canceled System Shock 2 because, oh my god. We got, like, we got like about, I think that was like 15 hours into System Shock 2. And then it's like... We got just swarmed with enemies, and it was, it was just a mess. We had kind of a cool duo going. You know, Jeff was the hacker who couldn't handle anything, uh, you know, weapon-wise. And I was the fucking muscle wizard out here slicing and dicing with the laser rapier. No clipping through the map, even though there's no cheat for that. And, like, blasting everything with lasers and all this other good stuff. But I couldn't hack with the shit, so... Oh, I guess I could also repair everything. But when the Enhanced Edition comes out, we're definitely playing that in co-op. Hopefully it'll all be a break. It'll all be, uh, you know, good to go. Now, Jeff broke me down, and we've been playing Destiny 1, but I hate it. It's so stupid. It, it was clearly made to have the Marine be in the game, and not the whoever the fuck you play. The Guardian, whatever. You know? So, I'm never, I'm not putting any of those videos out. Quake 2. Quake 2 was okay. It just got kind of repetitive, and I got kind of bored with it. It was at least pretty fun. Now, now Rainbow Six Extraction... No. That game was way too hard. Like, that... Why? Did... Ubisoft just be like, oh, well, we don't want to make these kind of games, so we're going to make a bad one. Ooh, we're stupid. Now, we also decided not to play through Borderlands, mainly because I just got bored and tired of Jeff rushing through the game constantly, and it just, it was kind of hard to enjoy. Now, we did play through Alien Fireteam Elite, but I got pissed towards the end of it because we started having trouble, and oh, it was my fault because Jeff and the third friend we played with, oh, you have to play as a certain class. You know, whatever, I had more fun playing Aliens Colonial marines anyways that game was so fun to play it was so much it was so ridiculous y'all know you've seen it i mean come on it, aliens colonial marines had better fucking sync it had the lip sync to the dialogue a fire team elite it's a big budget game but you couldn't put in lip sync to dialogue what the fuck i mean come on what what is that now, we are planning on playing Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 when it comes out. Now, till then, I've got some modding to do so we can play something besides Destiny 1. Which, we've been taking a break from games, and I've been golfing, and Jeff's been doing nothing. And he, I take him to the golf range from time to time, but he, uh... I don't think he much enjoys all, or it all that much. Now, next, I need to address the only truly original thing I've made on this channel. The misinformation video with Soap Rat Mary. Soap Rat Mary is gone, okay? It, it was a fucking bar of soap I stuck toothpicks in to make it look like a rat. <laughs> that that bar is long gone. And, uh, oh, also the Flower Badger video? 
That, uh, you know, once I figure out how to use Unreal and Blender, it, you know, I'll, I'll fucking get that going. All right, I've got, I've got them both on there. I've got Unreal 4 and I've got Blender, and they're on the computer, and they both run without making my computer want to catch on fire. That video is coming at some point. Now, I don't have any more Dead Space GMVs, but I do have, a, like, a couple more GMVs to make. Oh, I did finish System Shock Remake, and that's the next GMV that's coming out. Oh, I also need to play through Spec Ops The Line to get the other GMV, and uh, I've already played through Gears 3, and that's the next one coming out, and I'll make a GMV to kind of go with what happens in there. Now, as for the state of the next game breakdown, I haven't started playing it, but I finished System Shock, so I'm going to start playing it as soon as I get this video edited and put out. Now, for the large project I've been working on... Yeah, the uh, large project I've been talking about, that's completely canceled. When I tried working on it and just it, I got kind of burned out. So multi-project workload, it keeps me from getting burned out, okay? You know, when you sit down and work on one thing day after day after day after day, you just, you get kind of burned out. Which, you know, that's kind of what the, what the gameplay stuff is. But it's a let's play. It takes like an hour to edit one episode. Okay, it actually takes a lot more work than that because I have to sync everything together. And that's a lot harder now with two screens. But, uh, eh, whatever. Okay, time for the follow-up half of the video. Now, first... Drone. Oh my god, I forgot I recorded this with the potato headphone mic from Taller General. When I was a kid, I bought a set of headphones to go with this little mobile FM, AM FM radio. From Dollar General and they last they still work to this day but like the audio jack kind of got wore out after years of being plugged in and out of stuff you know I got tired of dealing with that so I went and bought another pair from Dollar General now of course I couldn't get a fucking you know just regular pair. I had to have a microphone so I got that those broke <laughs> those broke because I was on the phone with somebody and I was trying to pull them off and they're made of plastic and they just snapped in half I think it might have been before I recorded the video you know they still worked it's just but yeah, I'm, I'm happy I have, you know, I'm not using that microphone. Now, I'm still not sure why it's called Drone. You know, my best guess is they thought it was cool, it was just a cool name. The gameplay I used in the video was screen recorded on my old Windows 10 computer natively. Because I had no idea how to use a virtual machine, this is why I never showed you the newspaper animation, and, you know, why the cursor is always up there in the corner. You know, actually, I tried running it on a virtual machine and it didn't. It, there's something wrong with it. The... Abandonware download version works on Virtual Machine, which is just a demo, which uh, we'll get to that here in a second. I've got something to tell you about that. Drone? I cannot get that to record. I cannot get that game to record, no matter what I try. I have tried recording on the natively on the XP computer. Not the old computer. The laptop. And, uh, yeah, unregistered Hypercam, the Hypercam doesn't work. There's no OBS version to use it. The capture card doesn't work. The game will not run on the virtual machine, so that's completely out of the question. I got the MS-DOS version to work, and I was able to, you know, record that. But I don't know, I don't know, it's something to do with the resolution. Anytime you try to actually record it and actually get it to record, it uh, makes a little fucking corner screen with horrible colors. This was very apparent on when I tried on the Windows 7 computer, which you'll see right here. Video. Okay, this was my first video. I had no script and didn't even tell you where to find it. I have a copy from the eGames Galaxy of Games 350 collection, which I don't know if there's actually 350 games. I don't know why it's called that. You can also get it from Abandonware. And there's like a playable browser version somewhere on like a... It's like a mini Flash game. The original version of this game was $35. That's with shipping and handling. It was $30 and then $5 shipping and handling. Good... God, I paid I paid forty dollars for System Shock on GOG, and I think it's even forty dollars for a hard disk copy. But like, oh my! For nineteen ninety seven, that is ridiculous. Thirty dollars for this, motherfucker! There were games coming out back then that were way more better for like the same price. And how like we have come so far in gaming, and it's. It just goes to show you, fucking, I mean, and this was an indie game, too. Like, I wouldn't have charged more than $10 for this. Now, now, granted, like, two people probably spent a lot of time working on it. And probably thought, oh, that's a fair price. Oh, we're maybe putting it on a disc for you and everything. But still, $30? Good lord. Kind of goes to show how far we've come in gaming, you know. A game like that made today, that'd be like a dollar. All right, next. Warzone 2100. Oh, God, the mic. 
Well, this time I used my old computer's mic, which, you know, seemed weirdly high quality, but, you know, this was the second video I'd ever made. I still knew nothing, for God's sake. I, I didn't know anything about audio editing. I forgot to, I recorded this in the Filmora app, you know? What do you want from me? I, I'm getting better. I was just going off like the Act Man and, and the Game Dungeon from Ross Scott. Okay, I, I have it down here. I want to emphasize, do not play it, the Steam version. Well, I will still tell you, don't don't get this game on Steam. Don't get Warzone 2100 on Steam, okay? It is a free download from the official Warzone 2100 website. It works perfectly. It runs natively. It might take you a minute, but you can get the all the animations and everything downloaded. The main reason I hated the Steam port, and I'm pretty sure why it's not officially supported by the community, is, yeah, there's certain things change. There's certain liberties taken in the Steam port, but they did not cut out the technology freedom of choice to build whatever the fuck you wanted. That was just me being stupid. I didn't know there was a toggle button to hide obsolete technology. Which, that makes me way happier. I got on and started playing it on, like, the latest 4.42 version, and I thought, oh my god, they deleted it, oh no! And it's like, oh no, wait, it's just this simple button. You know, Jeff showed me that. I love how this game is officially supported by the community, because in 2004, Eidos Interactive released all the source code for the game. And since then, the community has done such a great job supporting and updating and improving and doing all this work to the game. I mean, it looks really good. If you look at the original, and then you look at it now, like, there's, a, there's, there's not that big of a difference, but there's a noticeable difference. We got lucky with this game, because the people, the company that made and published the game got absorbed into Square Enix. And, uh, yeah, we all know how uh, Square Enix is, you know. Don't you love how this game runs on modern systems? Oh, yeah, I got a bone to pick with Square Enix. Where's Supreme Commander 3? I mean, come on. Oh yeah, I also almost, oh, almost forgot to mention. This is one of the few RTS games that actually feels like an RTS game. A lot of a lot of RTS games, they just kind of feel like it feels like you can stick to one tactic the whole time, or you can like flood the enemy with units, like a total annihilation. It feels like you can brute force your way through a lot of stuff. You can't do that in Warzone 2100. You can't brute force your way through the game. You have to like sit down and actually think about what you're gonna do. Now, granted, you have to do that while you're pausing the game because of the goddamn time limit. Which, uh, thank God for cheats, which I did use in my playthrough. Which y'all already knew about that. I also used the debug menu, which was fucking hilarious to use. Which, uh, I'll say this, I don't like the debug menu in the latest version. It's, it, it's too big. It makes it kind of harder to work with. Whatever. I love how you can control the weather from that. You know, I do like how the final battle removed the time limits. Turned it into the ultimate RTS mission. The final mission was definitely the ultimate RTS mission. Motherfucker, I use cheat codes. I don't, I don't do that kind of shit. I mean, I just, look, I just wanted to get through the game. I, I get it. It's an ultimate RTS. I'm not great at RTS. Jeff beat me at, like, several of them, except Supreme Commander, which I just flood him with units. Yeah, I didn't really talk about the music in uh, Warzone 2100. There is modern music created by the community for this game. I did not know that. You can go into the debug... Well, maybe not the debug. I can't remember. You can go into one of the menus and switch up the music to play different tracks. And it's really cool. I was really impressed with all this. There's also like four or five hour YouTube compilations of the Warzone 2100 music. Which is pretty cool. As far as the footage... The footage is glitchy in this game because I used Filmora's screen capture software. Because I... I fuck, I didn't know about OBS. Come on, that shit's awesome. Except for the fucking yellow barrier that gets kind of distracting. Now, I also used film more to record the Fallout Tactics video, which didn't have as many glitches, and I'm not really sure why. OBS has, like, no glitches, but, you know, there's some games that are like, oh, you're using OBS, bam, bam, you're bam. Which is why I use a capture card, because how the... F Checkmate, motherfucker. Unless you got DRM that sends some sort of screaming audio through the capture card. You ain't detecting this. Also, you know, me and Jeff recorded some multiplayer footage. The multiplayer for Warzone 2100 is still active. Not, like, there's not a lot of people out there playing it. It's mainly, like, people on the weekends chilling with it. I tried to get on there a couple times, and I just they couldn't really get anywhere. I don't know. Me and Jeff played it, and we had fun with it. It was, it was hilarious watching... What, you know, it's just, I just like, oh, because Jeff bum-rushed me the first couple times. But then I started figuring out, oh, if I build these defenses, I'll be good to go. I pretty much used the tactic of, oh, just hold them off until you have an overwhelming amount of units. Abandonware does not have Warzone 2100. It has a patch if you have the original game on disc. If you have it, it'll update it to a version 1.1. Th there's only two places you can get this outside of finding a disc copy. Steam, which I suggest you do not, and the website itself, which is 
the best way to get it and the only real good way to get it. This is the Brotherhood getting to Chicago. I think it's a pretty cool cinematic. Here, I'll let you look at it for a bit. Time for the first game review for my new for my new computer and new mic, which is no longer my new mic since this is on my newer mic, which hopefully is better. Even though I heard nothing really wrong with the old one, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to try a different mic. I I'm trying one right now. I mean, it... I'll be honest with you, it looks kind of like a dildo, and it's kind of freaking me out a little bit. But, you know, all microphones look like that. I'm sorry a third of the video was just made up of cinematics narrated by, by, by Ron Perlman. But come on, it's Ron Perlman. He's cool. I had like an hour and a half audio. Cut down to 45 minutes, and then that only extended it at like 15, 20 minutes. But yeah, okay, fine. It was a little bit much. Now, I still haven't tested the multiplayer, but I did find out the game is on GOG and runs pretty well. I didn't have to run it, you know, in, in compatibility mode for Windows 8 just to run it full screen like I did on Steam. Which, you know, I don't actually have a Steam account, I was just using Jeff's. And ever since I discovered GOG and I got all the disc copies of all the Half-Life stuff, I'm never going on Steam again. Unless Xbox completely obliterates itself and says, Oh, oh big cheese profits over games. Oh. Unless they go that route. Look, if Xbox crashes and burns, I'll go get a Steam account. Because I'm not getting a PS5. I, I don't like Sony. I was just never a big fan of that style controller. Me and Jeff had one for the PC back when we were children on the old computer. And uh, I never cared for that controller. I never cared for that style. It's just, it felt weird. And, you know, this was before we got the 360. The 360 just feels a little bit more normal, I guess. I don't know. It's kind of funny. The Xbox the newest controllers, they have this, like, snap and play thing where you can, like, rearrange the... The, the deals, the, the analog sticks and the play buttons and all that stuff in the controller. Which I think that's kind of cool. But good lord, for disabled people, $300? I mean, motherfucker, a regular one costs 70 This one cannot be that bad. I mean, for God's sakes. Now, uh, back to the... Sure, on GOG, the cinematics are, you know, in a small box of the center screen. And the desktop menu is a little off. It was still easier than the goddamn Steam version. It was still easier to get working, all right? I was able to download it, install it, play it, adjust the screen resolution, can't run it at a certain screen resolution for some reason. I think the Steam version is kind of the same way. But you get what I'm saying. It's just easier. I will not use Steam. Okay, after seeing the Ackman's video on the rise and fall of Valve and all that stuff, and the fact that Steam games don't run on anything but Windows 10 Plus operating systems, no, nah, and I just said all that stuff about it. You know what, I'll get Steam if Xbox does what I just said. But at least Valve isn't as bad as it used to be, I guess. I still like GOG better. Okay, I'm going to use GOG for stuff way more, all right? They work on modern systems. I'm just going to stick with it. I love being able to just download and play a game and not have to worry about being connected. Yeah, and I guess if I can find it on disc, that's even better. And Abandonware... Abandonware is okay, but sometimes it's kind of a pain to get stuff to work on Abandonware. I'm not making a gun video for all the guns and tactics. There, there's a lot. I know I said I was going to, but that's a lot of guns. And that's a lot of research. And I'm not a gun expert, okay? I really don't want to add that to my list of projects. Now, I hate to say it, but the game is considered non-canon, which is a real shame, because the game set up a sequel that would have been, like, so cool. It would have been so cool. It was basically, they were they were going to face toe-to-toe -to -toe with the West Coast Brotherhood, you know, pre-Enclave Collapse. But instead, the sequel plan was to go down to Florida, fight Gator Butte, and to track down a rogue geek. Now, that would have been cool and all, but... Motherfucker, I want to see Midwest Brotherhood, who are super insane, but awesome, but not racist, and not hateful of anything that's not human, face off against the OG Brotherhood. I think that would have been a cool, cool game. Oh well, maybe season two of the Fallout show will show the NCR and Brotherhood teaming up to take down an army of vault Tech robots. Which I guess was a possible outcome. The robots were both vault Techs and the military. You know what, that show is the closest we're going to get to a tactic sequel, okay? Oh well. <laughs> Now, I still have no idea what SA is supposed to mean, but I found out Infogrames is coming back. Atari SA has decided to bring back what they started out as. The Infogrames publisher, which I think Atari SA might actually be one of the few companies that not, that's not out there freaking sticking it to their customers. Oh, well, but we want money. <laughs> we want all the money. <laughs> that's pretty much... That, that's, X, that's Microsoft and fucking every goddamn company right now. I mean, look at what Sony did with Helldivers too. What, what? Oh, we have we have to get our PS and numbers up. Oh. It's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? 
Or whatever. Don't you love when a company buys another company and then rebrands themselves of what they just bought because, oh, it's more well-known. Oh, I, I still don't get why they dropped it. I was wrong about the Battleship movie. It, it It's fun to watch. I enjoyed it. it it's kind of funny. Now, I still have not tried multiplayer in Battleship, but come on! It, it cannot be that different from just playing with somebody in the physical game. It's Battleship. How much different can it get? I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. Also, my, uh... My theory, that's all bogus, that's all fucking out the window, <laughs> complete bullshit. I, I just, I never noticed the mainland in the satellite launching video. I, I never noticed that until I was going back and editing the video. And I noticed, oh wait, there's land there. I also forgot to say that uh, this game and its sequel, which I never did play, it's on Abandonware. That's the only place you can get it. Abandonware, and if you have a disc copy like I did. Which, you know, the abandoned work version works just fine on a Windows XP virtual machine. Alright. Guess it'll run on Windows 98. Fuck, I don't know. I know the disc copy did. I don't know about the abandoned work copy. Now, I know I said Jeff would start making reviews, but he's given up on that. He, he can't write a script worth a damn. And, you know, I can't write one either, but at least I'm trying. He has kind of like a follow-through issue. He doesn't finish things. Honestly, I don't think he wanted to make them anyways. I think he just saw other people making it and thought, Oh, that'd be kind of fun to make. That'd be fun. And then he just, you know, kind of gave up on it, which I can't blame him. I kind of want to give this all up anyways. I got other shit to do. I run a company, for God's sake. But th this is kind of a fun side thing to do. It, it gives me something to do besides just sit and play video games for no reason. And over and over and over and over. But, you know, that's just how it is. Well, that's it for now. I'll, I'll see y'all in the next one.